How is it possible that probiotics can increase obesity and weight gain? I thought probiotics were associated with better gut health and helping with the immune system, improving serotonin, but no one's ever told me about the fattening properties of probiotics. What's up guys, my name is Lucas, the founder of Ergogenic Health, and my mission is to bring you the most cutting edge health information that you'll struggle to find on Google. If you do not care about your health, please do not subscribe to my channel. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is take a look at how probiotics can increase weight gain and obesity. And this may come as a surprise to many people because they always automatically assume, you know, probiotics and you know, prebiotics as beneficial for the body, regardless of their condition. First of all, let's define what probiotics actually are. Probiotics are basically live microorganisms, which when administered in adequate amounts, confer a health benefit on the host. So we can see here a breakdown of the functions of probiotics starting with reproduction of pathogenic microflora so they can prevent the reproduction of pathogenic microflora in this situation this may look like a reduction in candida a reduction in clostridia bacteria and some other really bad bacteria maybe even klebsiella in addition we know that probiotics can exert an antagonistic effect on harmful microorganisms so they can you know reduce the risk of traveler's diarrhea, food poisoning, and things like that. Then we also know that probiotics can strengthen the immune system. Everyone knows, I hope by now, that you know majority of our immune cells lie within our gastrointestinal tract. We know that probiotics can also improve digestion and they can also impact intestinal motility. So they can either speed up gut transit time or they can also slow them down. So helping with both constipation and diarrhea. Certain types of probiotics and bacteria can produce you know, vitamin K, vitamin B12, B1, folic acid, and even biotin. We know that certain gut bacteria can actually act as precursors to various B vitamins in the body. Some probiotics have also been shown to normalize the level of cholesterol in the body. So that's another key benefit. And they also can help with the digestion of carbohydrates and proteins. And then they can also regulate the absorption of minerals, gases, and water. So here we can see different types of probiotics, starting from the live cultures. We've got, you know, the probiotics on the left-hand side. We have probiotic drugs, probiotic medical foods, probiotic rich foods, non-oral probiotics, probiotic animal feed, defined microbial consortia, and probiotic dietary supplements, probiotic infant formulas, and then non-probiotic, so fermented foods with undefined microbial content and undefined consortia, including fecal microbiota transplants. So how does this particular bacteria increase weight gain? Now, this study was titled Comparative Meta-Analysis of the Effect of Lactobacillus Species on Weight Gain in Humans and Animals. Now, what the authors noted was that lactobacillus acidophilus administration resulted in significant weight gain in humans and also animals. Results were consistent in humans and animals and that lactobacillus fermentum and lactobacillus ingluve, <laughs> ingluve, sorry, I pronounced that wrong, were associated with weight gain in animals. On the other hand, lactobacillus plantarum was associated with weight loss in animals and lactobacillus azari was associated with weight loss in both obese humans and animals. So we know that lactobacillus administ uh, acidophilus, you know, is gonna exacerbate weight gain and same with lactobacillus fermentum and lactobacillus ingluvi, ingluvi. It's a really difficult pronunciation. But we can see there how it's, you know, these are potential bacterial strains that we may want to avoid this is something that we need to consider and it's you know research that's rarely discussed and i really wanted to you know highlight that and bring this to your attention also wanted to outline something that also gets neglected is 
how bacterial overgrowth worsens obesity. Bacterial overgrowth, which is very common, can exacerbate obesity through a variety of mechanisms. But I want to just give you a snapshot of this particular study. Microbiota dependent hepatic lipogenesis mediated by sterile COA desaturase 1, SCD1, promotes metabolic syndrome in TLR, TLR5 deficient mice. And I'll just read what they noted from the study. While it's true that neither people nor mice can digest plant-derived fiber, their gut bacteria can readily ferment the fibers and then release them as energy-rich short-chain fatty acids such as acetic acid. Once they reach the liver, these compounds convert into lipids and add to fat deposits that could potentially lead to the development of metabolic syndrome, especially in people and mice lacking this toll-like receptor 5, so TLR5. In the current study published in the Journal of Cell Metabolism, the researchers found a link between unchecked bacterial fermentation, short-chain fatty acids, and increased liver lipids or fats, which can cause non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, leading to liver damage. They also found that the overconsumption of dietary fiber may have adverse consequences in mice compromised in mice with compromised TLR5 function and gut bacterial overgrowth. So we can see here how, you know, more fiber is not always a good thing and some certain types of fiber can ferment and lead to an abundance of particular, you know, bacterial species and that can also worsen um, obesity, particularly when we lack that TLR5 receptor. So the main takeaway of this particular video is to treat probiotics like drugs. They really are you know, compounds that we need to respect and obviously use them in very specific situations. You know, there are certain probiotics that I personally use, you know, diarrhea, food poisoning, or even constipation. There are certain probiotics I'll use to boost my immune system. And really just want to highlight here how you know certain types of probiotics can affect body composition and to avoid the main ones that I spoke about. The other thing I want to highlight is that you know the future of probiotics that really excites me is the field of you know the anti-obesogenic probiotic bacterial spe uh, species. So ones that improve insulin sensitivity. We know that Akkermansia can do that, and there's studies happening literally right now where they're administering. Akkermansia bacteria as a supplement to improve insulin sensitivity. And then also the field of psychobiotics. Psychobiotics are really fascinating because I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, various uh, psychobiotics that can affect specific neurotransmitters. So hopefully you learned something new. Please do yourself a favor and check out some of the amazing links in the video description. I've got some really, you know, great resources there for you to check out. And yeah, hopefully you learned something new. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.